what's your figure? We uh, busted up so far. Well, that plate glass window will get you close to $100. Mm. It's not bad for a two-day vacation. Huh? No, not bad at all. <laughs> They work for me. It was just a friendly fight? Yeah, I can see that. Get everybody outside. Jose. See? What happened? The Grandote. That big moose waxer. He said he wanted to fight. We tried to leave, but he hit me. The others came to help. You take them in and go back to the ranch. What about you? I'll be alone. Está bien. Kirby? Mr. Lancer, why don't you pull up a chair and have a drink on the house and cool yourself off? Those your men? My men? Oh, no. no. I wouldn't say that. They just ride with me, that's all. Then I suggest you take your men and ride out of Spanish Wells. Are you the uh, law around here, Mr. Lancer? No, there's no law around here. Not yet. Uh, well, in that case, I think I'll just stay. But since there is no, uh, no jail and no law in this growing little community, why don't you just let my men have their harmless fun? You call it harmless fun to beat up ranch hands? Well, put it this way, Mr. Lancer. If they didn't have this, uh, this kind of simple release, they might turn to something like, um, oh, uh, burning down ranch houses? I think you'd be the first to agree that that sort of thing wouldn't help a growing little community. Look, why don't you take my advice? When this town wants law, it'll have law. Until then, don't push it. talk to you. I don't guess it hurt none to listen. I'm sorry, senor. The men are proud. They would not run away. I know, Jose. Thank you for filling me in. Tell the men not to try working tomorrow, huh? Buenas noches. Buenas noches, Jose. Well, you heard that. When are you going to change it? I don't know that we can. I don't want any political speeches, George. I want a marshal for Spanish Wells. And every other fly speck on the map wants and even needs the same. Now, what makes you different from uh, any of them? Well, because we're growing so fast, because you've got to start someplace, and yes, George, because you know me, and you know I wouldn't yell fire unless there was one. You're the lieutenant governor. You have the authority to send a marshal here. <laughs> you know, I wondered why you insisted I be your guest for a few days. Now I know. George. Lancer buys supplies in Spanish Wells. The men that work this ranch spend money there, and right now there's not a church, there's not a school, there's not even a stage passing through. Suppose we send you a marshal. What's he supposed to do, rent a hotel room for the prisoners? I've written the governor about that. I've told him that Lancer pledges to have a jail built. <laughs> Murdoch, you should have been a lawyer. All right, all right, you'll... Uh... You'll get your man. 
Just let me know when there's a jail here. George, could I get you a brandy? No, thanks. I better get some rest. I'm leaving bright and early tomorrow. Sure you won't stay a little longer? I'm a politician. It's never wise to stay too long in the same place. <laughs> Good night, Murdoch. Good night, George. If Jose told you what happened, I think we better have a talk. I did something tonight I... I don't think you're going to approve of. Try me. I spent some of your money. How much? About a thousand dollars. Well, somebody has to do something about Spanish wells. There are some good people there, and they're being hurt. And because they're hurting, so is Lancer. So I got together with the townsmen tonight, and everybody agreed that they need some place to put the drunks to sober up. They all agreed that what the town needs is a jail. But they won't build it. No. No, they won't. So finally, I said that Lancer would, as a, as a gift to the community. Now, I know, I know I should have talked to you before I made the offer, but I just felt that the time was right. Why? Because the people are not against the idea. Now, Lancer could force it, but the town would resent that. This way, I think we can get everybody behind us. It could be the beginning to... to other beginnings. Do you, um... Do you think it's worth a thousand dollars of our money? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, I don't know whether Johnny would, but... Uh, I do. As a matter of fact, I just pressured the lieutenant governor into promising us a marshal if we can get the jail built. I, uh, I assured him we would. We do think alike, don't we? Is that so surprising? people we don't want a jail in this town this is an open town we're gonna keep it that way you make sure they understand that all right get them out of here <laughs> nicely done Jeremy nicely done thank you Bonell we might as well finish it, get some rope, and tear the rest of it down, huh? No, no, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Oh, no, look, I don't, uh, I don't want to interfere. I'm just uh, a paying visitor. But I have had some experience in this sort of thing. Let it stand. That way, everybody will get the message. Good idea. Let it stand, boys. I'll see you back at the saloon. We deliberately stayed away from that meeting, and now I know why. Hey, Charlie. Charlie, would you cut the hammering for a while? Yes, sir, Mr. Lancer. Kirby has owned the saloon in Spanish Wells for a long time. I imagine a lot of his business comes from men outside the law. It's only natural he'd be against the jail. Oh, what do we do? Kirby's a gambler, but I don't believe he's a killer. Maybe when he finds out we're serious, he'll back off. Yeah. Double the rate. Tell the carpenter I personally guarantee Lancer men for protection. Well, you're gonna need a cavalry detachment to do that because your carpenter's halfway to Modesto by now. He just left the lumber at the sawmill, turned tail, and ran out. Well, he's got a family. He's got to make a living. He's not concerned about law, about hope for the future. He can't afford the price. That's why we've got to do it. 
Take Charlie with you, Scott. Get the lumber into town. Find somebody to build the jail. Johnny will be in from the north tonight. What if Kirby wants to fight? I'd like to avoid that. And what if we can't? We fight. Fine. Charlie! taste, mister? No, thank you, Charlie. I've got a few things on my mind right now. That's the difference between you and me. Fix-it man can take some time out for dreaming now and again. No difference, Charlie. We all take time out for that. Oh, sure, sure. But what I mean is, I don't have to keep the wheels turning every second. Heck, my specialty's always been outhouses and hitch rails. I always figured if I was a little off here or there, it didn't make no never mind. Drove a lot of nails into a lot of outhouses and hitch rails. Oh. Looks like you're a man just about out of dreams, Charlie. Yes, sir. Certainly does. While we're in town, I'd like to do some bill paying. I sure could use a little advance to Saturday. How much do you need? Well, there was that table, and then there was two chairs, and a hitch rail, and that bureau in Mr. Reese's room uh, got $8 coming up to now. Be more by Saturday. All right, Charlie, here you are. $8. $8. Well, let's, uh, let's make that an even 10. Oh, thanks. Charlie. You wouldn't happen to know any carpenters in town, would you? Ain't many. Outside of that fellow who quit, maybe two or three. Gotta to talk to Harvey at the blacksmith. He helps them all, bend and iron and the like. I'll be at the saloon when you're ready. Kirby, didn't expect to see you in here. Can we buy you a drink? I'm looking for Charlie. Found yourself a carpenter yet? I think you know I haven't. I don't think you're going to. Better that way. Save a few broken heads. Men like Peter Bonell, who live a little bit outside the law, need a place to relax. A place where they don't have to worry about sheriffs and marshals. I have a good business here, and I don't like trouble. But I'll have to tell you, I'm not going to let you build that jail. You're right, Kirby. You have a business. Mind it. Now, have you seen Charlie? He left here about 15 minutes ago. Lancer. If you find him, take good care of him, huh? Come in! I've been expecting you. I just couldn't sit there. Come in, come in. You said you'd be at the saloon, Charlie. I gotta talk to you uh, about something serious. You sit right down there. I've been dreaming some since I left you this afternoon. And not just from that bottle, neither. Mr. Lancer, 
In 63 years, I never turned even one rock that said Charlie Wingate passed through here between heaven and hell. I ain't done nothing. Just fix things and get drunk. Well, Charlie, are you sure you haven't been drinking a little too much already? Then I got to thinking and thinking it would be mighty good to build something. Something strong and fine. Something people passed by and said, Old Charlie Wingate did a good job there. Now I says to myself, shucks, nobody would trust you to build a house or a ranch. Then I says to myself, how about that jail? How about that, Mr. Lancer? How about letting me build that jail? Right. Well, I don't know, Charlie. Uh... Now, now, don't say no until you hear me out. An old man like me ain't gonna get many chances now. You gotta fight for them. Oh, I know, I've never done nothing but fix things. But I can build her. I'll do exactly as you say. I'll slow down on the drinking. I'll work hard. I'll even work for free. Charlie, that's not... That wouldn't be necessary. It's... You ain't found yourself no carpenter. Mr. Lancer, give me the chance. No, Charlie. One man's been hurt already, and Kirby would see that you were hurt, too. That's just it. He wouldn't hurt me. I found him 15 years ago, when he was a kid, didn't have no place to go. I took him in. He wouldn't hurt me. You're a young man. You got time to build something. Can an old man build something, too? Are you saying that it's no use? That I might as well die and get it over with? Don't say that. All right, Charlie. Well, they got the job. A dollar a day, we furnish the tools. We gotta have a drink on that, Mr. Lancer. Charlie's not a carpenter. He's a tired old guy who can't defend himself against a, a against a tired old jackrabbit. What's going to happen when Kirby plows into him? Johnny, it's a chance to get some law in Spanish Wells. If we fight it through, it might keep other Charlie Wingates from getting hurt. So what do you want us to do? Ring the jail with 20 men, give them rifles, and get it built that way? Nope, won't do any good. Kirby will just wait till we build the jail, then he'll wait till we leave, and then he'll tear it down. Charlie's worked for almost everybody around here. Everybody knows him, everybody kind of loves the old boy. If he builds the jail, he might bring this whole town together. Kirby might back off. If he doesn't, I want you two there. You mean you want us to sit there while he's building this jail? Well, you think of the experience you're going to get. I mean, you're going to know how that jail's built and learn how to break out before they lock you in. <laughs> understand why Charlie would do that. But he has. And you're the only one who can stop him. After all, this is when the last town is open to us. We want to keep it like that, just as it is. I know that. Well, don't worry about it. I'll... I'll handle Charlie. I'm sure you will. I sure worked up a sweat. Booze and boards ain't such a good combination, Mr. Lancer. Let me give you help with those, Charlie. We don't want you to overdo it the first day. Oh, sure, sure. You know, it's a funny thing. I never had a job that lasted more than a day or two. Changes things. 
knowing there's some place to go the next morning. Well, I gotta get moving. Now, don't you worry. I can handle this myself. I'd kind of like to feel that this was all my job, if you get what I mean. Sure, Charlie, I understand. brought a sack of marbles. Maybe we could play. Now, where's your community spirit, brother? Since when do you call this a community? If Benell and his men rode in here to take apart that jail, how many good, decent town folk do you think you'd find standing at your side? How many? None. Tell me, brother, were you born in that synagogue? Or did you just learn it? I learned my lesson, Scott. The hard way. That part of the lesson? That? No, that is empty, you see? That's just window dressing. Nothing like the sight of a scatter gun to show you mean business. This one? This is a hit or miss kind of gun. It gives you a little hope, but not always. You stand up to it, you figure maybe you got a chance. This one, this wipes a whole street. And this kind of separates the men from the boys. <laughs> <laughs> now you're learning, brother. You know, a little work, I think I could make a professional out of you. You think maybe you could? A carpenter. Yes. Charlie's an old friend of mine. Yes, so I understand. Would you mind if I have a word with him? Right there. something, kid. You're gonna have to quit, Charlie. What's gonna be fun is when I put the windows in. Of course, that doesn't come till I get the walls up. I said, you're going to have to quit. I heard you, kid. The thing is, you're wrong. I'm gonna finish. I'll pay you double, Charlie. It ain't that. Well, then what is it? Don't you know you're making a fool out of me? Every man in this town is watching you. They all know we've been close. I never traded on that, kid. Well, the Lancer family is anybody else who get hurt here. They know that. They're using you. Not true. Fact is, I had a hard time getting a job. I never made out I was your father, kid. Well, you was my boy. Oh, sure, I took you in, give you a place to sleep, found some clothes for you, and got enough job fixing things so we both had food. We never made no bones about things, though. You owed me nothing. What I'd done was just what I'd done. I never figured I owed you nothing, neither. Charlie, you don't owe me anything. You remember that bad winter we was locked in because of the snow? I made you the hammer. Put the agates in the handle. I told you, was gonna come a time when you'd have to stand on your own. Same was gonna come for me. Now's that time, kid. Charlie, I know that I owe you... I never held you back, kid. I don't expect you to do that to me, neither. Charlie. I can't let you finish this jail, Charlie. That's up to you. You ought to do what you think is best.
a bottle and three glasses. Well, he's awful tired. I know. Why didn't he want you to buy the drinks? He's a proud man, Johnny. Yeah, I kind of like him. He wouldn't let me pay for the whiskey. It's free. He left the bottle. Compliments of the kid. Well, that's Kirby to me. He probably figures I'll get good and drunk and not be able to work. Charlie, if you think you should quit, we'd understand. Oh, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't want that. A fella kind of feels he can do the big job if and when it comes. He can handle the real bad things. Trouble is all them little things. You keep saying they don't count. And you talk yourself into not paying any attention. Then you get old, like me. Ain't never had any of the big fights, and you've lost all the little ones. Time's given out. All you can do is try and make it up before it's too late. I'm doing that. That swallow was just enough. Have another? Henry, put my name on this bottle. Poke it back there somewhere. Tell Kirby thanks. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Because uh, we don't mind staying. Oh, no, no, no. Kirby won't hurt me. Your staying only makes things worse. People will talk more. The kid ain't as bad as you think. OK. It was dark. I didn't know who it was. Could have been robbers looking for money. Oh, Charlie. Well, you can't prove it was Kirby's men. Sure. Because I was working on the jail, that might have been a reason. I just can't believe the kid would do that. Not to me. And you can't prove it, Mr. Lancer. No. No, Charlie, I can't prove it. We got used to the idea that we made a mistake. Should never let Charlie do that. We got to stop it. You tell him when he comes out, I'm going to tell Kirby. I think one of us should go with you. No. Don't lecture me, Mr. Lancer. You started this. You hired Charlie. I didn't have him beat up. That beating saved his life, don't you know that? There are people in this town that would have killed him. Pete Bonell and his gang were quite ready. I had to do what I did. I'll tell Charlie that. How bad was he hurt? About 15 years. I hope that you don't think that I wanted to hurt Charlie. I almost went crazy trying to figure out something else. You're very lucky, Mr. Lancher. You can do what you want. I have to do what others want. No, you don't. Oh, Kirby, you can be your own man. That jail's not going to hurt you any. I don't know that. Well, I'll tell you something you'd better know. That jail's gonna get built if I have to nail every nail myself. I'm not a carpenter. Neither are my sons. But you better send more men if you come after us. Get that, will you? Bunnell? Yeah? I'm Murdoch Lancer. 
Yes, I know who you are. I came about the jail. Kirby says you've been pressuring him. I wanted to stop. I always heard you were direct, so I'll be too. I'll do everything I can to see that you fail in this thing, short of direct intervention. I'm not in the habit of playing little games and little towns. I suggest you tell Kirby that. I hope we never have to talk again, but Alan. Mm-hmm. Well, that's up to you, Mr. Lancer. Your bet. Johnny, didn't you tell him he was through? Well, Murdoch, he wouldn't listen to me. All right, I'll tell him. Murdoch, you can't fire Charlie. You know, in the beginning, I thought we were wrong, mixing into this. I don't feel that way now. And there's only one reason. That's that old man. Look at him. He's so tired, he can hardly pound a nail. He's got a belly full of tears he can't lose, because Kirby did what he did. Murdoch Charlie's only got one thing left, and it's that jail. I mean, if you take it away from him, it'll be the same as killing him. It'll kill them, too. Hey, Charlie! You must fall over there! It's always this way. I'd forgotten. Cow towns, stage stations, railheads. One little start. You know it's going to go straight to the end. Well, I guess if Charlie can stay with the Lancers, the Lancers can stay with Charlie. We're gonna have to keep a mighty close eye on him. Well, that won't be so bad. Kid. Hello, Charlie. It's all right. I just, I just wanted to talk to Charlie. Sure, kid. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You just step outside in the yard. I promise you, there's nothing to be afraid of. You better go out the back. Keep him in sight. What's it going to take, Charlie, to make you give all this up? Now, you know better than that, kid. Ain't nothing going to make me quit. I've tried to hold Bonell back as long as I can, Charlie. I... From now on, I just can't be responsible for what might happen. Don't you worry, Nan. Everything will work out all right. Well, Charlie, I'll try and talk to Bonell again and see I just don't think it's going to do any good. You do that. Good night, Charlie. Good night, kid. I told you there'd be no trouble here. Well, you were right, Charlie. We'll bed down in the barn. There's covers and everything out there. Just come and get me if you need anything more. Thanks, sir. Good night, boy. Good night. Everything all right, Johnny? I don't know. I think so, but I'm not sure. Oh, the kid will work it out. Can't blame what happened on him. It was them others. Deep down, I know that. Sure as the world. That's the fire signal, Mr. Lancer. Stop! 
car and get some shovels. Poor old Charlie. Look what they've done to his jail. Those buildings catch half this town all day. No, that wouldn't be so bad. Hurry up, break some more back and go again. You ain't gonna save that jail. to save everything but the jail. What are we going to do now? Let's start with Kirby. I didn't have anything to do with it. On your feet, I didn't have anything to do with burning down that jail. Pete Bonal and his gang, he came in here last night and burned it down. He's gonna make this town his headquarters. He's gonna build an empire here, bring all of his men here. Nothing I can do to stop him, nothing you can do either. Where is he? I wouldn't fool around with him if I were you. You cause trouble for him, he'll come back and burn down the whole town. You let us worry about that. Where is Bonal? When he left here last night, he said he was gonna camp at Fremont Pass. Off your horses. I said this man. Right, drop your guns. All right, through here. We've been expecting you, Mr. Lancer. Obviously. This gentleman here rode all the way out to tell us you were coming. I'm not used to such courtesy. So I invited him to stay so you could confirm his story. Why? You've been a fool, Lancer, and I almost was. Do you think I really care about Spanish Wells? You burned up that jail last night. My men and I rode out yesterday afternoon. The jail is still standing. I have no intention of risking gunfire over some small town. Are you trying to tell me you had nothing to do with setting fire to that jail? Nothing. You know what he came out here to tell us? His message was that you're going to kill us on sight. We were warned to fire first. I don't like being used. I suggest you return to Spanish Wells. That's where your real argument is. Who sent him? You got a man in that little town of yours who's all eaten out inside. Something about fellows who grew up hungry. They never know when to stop eating. Kirby? We're in the wrong place. So is Charlie.
Kirby, that old man. I can see. Now listen. And listen very carefully. Lane is up at the livery stable. I want you to go get him. And you find yourselves a place opposite the jail and stake yourselves out. I'm going to go talk to the old man. And when I walk away, if he isn't with me, I want you to kill him. Kill him? That's the word. What is all this, Harvey? Well, it appears to us like you got a little trouble, and I think it's about time some of us helped you. I ain't got no trouble I can't handle. Look here, Charlie, you know darn well, but... Don't you worry none, Harvey. If I need help, I'll call you. Just step right in, like the fellow says. No, Charlie. This is it. This is the end of the line. Now, I want you to come with me. Oh, I can't do that, kid. I got work to do here. Now, Charlie, you got to stop this while you can. Now, listen to me, Charlie. Big things can happen in this town, and big things can happen for you and me. But we got to keep an open town. If we get this jail up and get a marshal in here, they're going to squeeze us to death. Always before, kid, everything was you. But now you've grown up. You don't need me. Always before, you was it. Now it's me. Charlie, you can come and live with me. I'll take care of you. Anything you want, anything, I'll get it for you. That isn't it, kid. I want to take care of me. Don't you understand? I have to take care of me. That's not true, Charlie. Yes, it is. You got the saloon, you got money, you got years ahead. All I've got is me. Oh, I know I ain't much, but I'm all I've got. This jail is going to be the only thing to prove I ever passed through here. Kind of a monument-like. Charlie, I don't think you know how much this means to me. What I'll do to stop it. I know, kid. I know it was you who had me beat up. I know it was you who burned all this down. That's why I got to finish this jail. Up to then, I kind of figured you might be the one worthwhile thing I was gonna leave behind. Oh, Charlie. Please, please. Why can't you realize you can't do this alone? I'm not alone, kid. You are. sends regards. He says if you want Lancers killed, you're going to have to do it yourself. If I have to, I will.
kid's dead. All right, come on inside. Kid's been dead for a long time, Charlie. I, uh... don't understand. Any of it. Why? Did I do bad by him? Sometimes there is no why. You got a boy old enough to lead his own life, and then you say, dear God, here he is. Do the best you can. You did your best, Charlie. Someday, somebody's going to look at that and say, I wonder who he was. <laughs> you did a good job, Charlie. It cost a lot. But the kid I knew a long time ago would have liked it, though. I sure want to thank you, Lancers. You already have, Charlie. 